Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse and in this one hour tutorial, we're trying to build another machine learning model is going to be used to predict whether a particular breast cancer screening is malignant or it is benign, right? With a very nice package called Sharp Sharp, we'll be trying to use to interpret what our prediction is. That's why the prediction gives us a particular prediction. So what is Sharp? So Sharp is a very nice package which tries to break down a prediction to show the impact of each feature, right? So it is usually based on a game theory and then it combines the best of both the addictive, the first form of addictive feature attribution methods such as line and then the slow form such as sharply values itself to give us a very nice package to interpret models, right? So to install, just go with pip install sharp to, is, to install this particular package. So as I said, it's based on game theory. So what is game theory? So game theory is simply, simply a and so you have a you have a game right like the football team a football game and then we have a payout or a reward or the, the prediction what we want to, what we want to win or the end result of the game so how are each and every players which which represent the features going to contribute to make sure that we get the payout make sure that we get the we win right or get the reward so that is the basic idea about game theory so we are trying to see with this particular package how each of the features are contributing to give us that particular payoff so it's very very powerful package that allows us to be able to find the order of importance right of how each and every of the features is impacting our prediction so it's very nice and there's some interesting things you can also do with it so let's move on to working with embedding our model and then interpret it so we're using our idea package that is pandas and numpy then our machine learning model that is from sklearn so logistic regression and then knn then train the split to split our data set then you also be using some visualization package to visualize our data right so we have matplotlib and then cbo so our data set is from uci machine learning archive and it's not having column headers right so we'll be trying to use the same attributes that are given to us to build our column headers so this is the column header then the final one is this is the label we have a class of two then four so two stands for benign four is malignant so let's see the header. So this is going to be our header that we have. And let's read our data set, which doesn't have any header, right? So df, if I go with df0, go to pd.read underscore csv. Then let's go with our breast cancer protection. So if I go with this and I check it, if I go back to this and check df0, you know that it's not having header, right? There's no header. So that's why we are trying to use these names as option to give us the header. So let's go with names, go to names. Then let's change this one from 0 to 2. The next one. So let's see it back again. So it's now it's having the column header. Very nice, very simple. So from this data set, we, have, we will not use this code, code names because this is just code names, not going to influence our data set. So we'll be using these ones to help us as our features. So let's see what we can do so far. So we check for the size of our data set, it's going to be df.ship. And let me check for the size of it, it's about 699 data points, right? Then let's check for the missing value. So df dot is it can be is now or is no dot sum. Then when you check it, it's going to give us that there are no missing NAs, right? Very interesting. So let's check for the data type that we have. So df so the, apart from that, this is one way of checking it. There's another way you can also check for the missing values to visualize it using another page called missing. So missing NO, so import missing NO as MSN, right? It can be as MSNO or MSNO. Then we will use this MSNO to visualize your bar. We have several formats. Then our data free. So it's going to visualize it in a very simple, very nice format. And if your data is having missing NO, it's going to visualize it very well, right? But this is better. So that's why I give us this particular kind of And also do for this map, this particular stuff, for oh, matrix. There are several ones you can do. So let's go with the matrix format. And then it's also going to help us visualize it. But I just said it's that clean, so that is why it is giving us this particular stuff. Okay. Now let's check for our data types. So df.d types to see that everything is well. Then we have everything as integers. So that means that we are not going to do any visualization. It's already in numbers, so we don't need to commit. But our bare nuclei is in objects. So we have to commit this object to something to actual integers. So let's check for the occurrence of our classes that we have. So it's going to be df.group by group by right then our class dot 
that's what we're trying to we're trying to group our entire staff to see which of them whether it's an imbalance that's it like because if it's an imbalance that's it can affect our reading and then you'll be thinking that you have the correct prediction dot size right so with this particular stuff you'll be able to get the classes so we have for benign we have four five eight and then for balloon we have two four one right which is done so there's a balance that's it you can also visualize this particular stuff to see it well so let's do it with this particular plot using bar plot then dot dot plot right and the kind is going to be bar so let's see so it's a very nice one. So we have two which is benign and then four for malignant. So that means that it's a balance that's it. You can work on it. Now let's check for the correlation between these individual character individual features that we have. It's going to be df dot core, right? So that is how to check for it. So let's store this one as correlation. Then when you check it, you can just go back and then visualize this particular stuff. So one of the ways of visualizing it is that you can you can just do it like this straight away. And then it's going to list some values for us, right? So this thing very interesting. You can see it like this, but if you want to visualize it, you can just use you can plot it to do that. So you can just go with the normal format of SNN for C1, right? C1 dot heat map. Then I'm going to pass in my core correlation that we stored at above. Then we're going to set annot annotation to true. So if you set annotation to true, it's going to build it in a very nice simple virtualization for us. So we see that you have code name which is not part anyway. The clamp thing there. So the one is that is actually correlated. So we are trying to compare the clamp names to that's what they were clamp names, clamp name to clamp thickness, unknown cell size, all of these things. So that is very interesting project and so is to get to see the correlation of how each of them is influencing the other, right? The correlation between them. Now let's see some of some actual visualization for the data data set. So I've already done this so that it comes faster. So when I go with this, it's going to plot the entire stuff for all of them to, to be able to see what our data set look like. Okay, perfect. So we see that we have our band chromatin, very interesting, and our class is two, and then we have four, not that bad. Our clamp thickness is zero, and then we have mitosis of zero, is possible, marginal zero, like all of these things make sense. Very interesting. So that means that we don't need to be scaling a lot, right? We have to scale them, but it makes sense. Now let's see some other stuff. We realized that there was no bad bare nuclei. Bare nuclei was not found here, right? So because it's an object, we have to convert it to a number to be able to see it very well. So let's do a simple description analysis. So df dot describe, right? So this is a normal description. It's going to give us this particular format. So here's how to transpose it. Let's go with the normal option of df dot describe, right? Then dot t. So at this format you see that it's going like this right so in case you want to transpose it to see it the other way around you can just go with the, the t let's go to transpose the entire stuff very interesting we have our code names here our features and then the count so looking at this particular data you realize that some of them are bigger than others right so like this is bigger then you realize that even the bare nuclei was not given there right because it's not a number so you have to find a means of converting it so since it's not a number if you check it back again it was an object right so you have to convert this particular particular to a particular data type so how do we do that there's something there that is making it zero so let's see what is making it so if i just i've looked through the data so i just know what is making that so it become faster so a nuclei right so if i go with this particular option so there's a question mark inside that is making this one give us a particular type right so if i go with the so this it is going to visualize and show us all these values there Right, it's having some question marks there. That is why it is giving us all the particular values. So, how do we convert this entire stuff that we have all these particular data points into numbers? Right, because the question mark is keeping it, it's it making us see the entire stuff as an object. So, let's see how to do that. So, I just use this replace or fill now. So, replace to replace this particular question mark with the value of zero. Right, then I'll store it back again. So, if I go back to what I have now, it is completed. I have to convert it to as converted to integers, right, or fruit. So we have two methods. You can use the apply pd dot numeric to numeric, or you can just use the simple one of the as type. So if I check it back again, realize that now it's going to give us as all of them as integers, including the bare nuclei. Perfect. So we can actually visualize it again. Then we're going to see some interesting stuff. So let's visualize the entire stuff again. 
you can see that now the Benny client came, right? So that, that is just work. So let's see how to prepare our data set. So in preparing our data set, we need to get our columns. So get dot columns. And you see the columns that we're going to be using. So we're using from here, right, all the way to our mitosis, right? That is what we're going to be using to build our data set, to build our features. So we're going to call that S features. Right, so as feature is going to be df, so all of these things are going to be for our s features, right? Perfect. And then for our labels, the labels is going to be our y labels, even only the class, so it's going to be uh, df, then class to so our labels. So we have them to get our features and our labels. In a very simple way. So in case I want to check for the entire stuff, this one we open it. The other method you can also do is like let's do it like this features. Then you use the DF with the I lock, right? So I lock. Then it starts from a particular value like this. Two, let's say one, two, ten, right? So with this particular this is the same thing that we did at the at the top there. You can also use this particular method to get our features. So there's another option to do. Now let's see how to scale our data set, right? So we know we, we now have our features. We now have our features and we have our labels, right? Let's scale our data set. So we're using Mima Scaler to help us scale. It's always useful that you scale your data set. Try to move out files. So it's going to be our scaler that you have stored. You can use standard scaler if you want. Then go to scaler. Initialize scaler. Perfect. Then I'm going to use the same scalar to scale the entire stuff. So I'm going to store it inside X, then scalar.fit transform, then S features. So we have our S features, so that's what we're trying to scale. So I'm going to scale it in a very simple way for us. Now we are scaled, so if I check this here, it's going to give us all these particular values, right? But these do not have headers. So it's useful if you have the input headers for this one. So how are you going to put headers? I'm going to convert this one into a data frame to help us to get the headers. If I check for this again, the ship, the ship so that is the same amount. It's now 9 instead of 11. Instead of 11, now it's just 9 because we are using all the features. So I have to convert this particular stuff with, with headers, right? To make it interesting for us to know which is which. So I'll be passing this one into a data frame. So I'll call that this again. Then pd dot data frame then i'm going to supply the s that, that we did right in particular that we created the one that we skilled because this s that we skilled i'm going to put that there and then we supply the name so the names is going to be so now this we need nine of them so if i go with the names like this yeah that we have code name right code name so this is not part so we need to get from one to ten or yeah one to ten instead of getting Everything so 1 to 10. Okay, so we have all of these things. So I can just use the same thing as the stuff. So the columns is going to names 1 to 10. Okay, so now if I check back to s dot and it's going to give us in a very simple one. So we have our clamp thickness all up all the way up to our uh, mitosis. Very interesting. Perfect. So which is killed very well, right? Now let's see how to work with this. So we're going to split this into Y test and then train test. So we are splitting it based on 20, 20, 80, or can make it any value for this particular option. And now we'll be able to work with it. So let's build our model. So in build our model, we can use several algorithms. We have logistic regression and KNN. So let's use a logistic regression for this one. And then you can use KNN if you want. So we're going to be logic, the name of our model, and then logist effect. Then we're going to initialize it. Initialize our particular model that we have, then I'm going to fit it together. So let's fit our data set together to build a relation between our right train, our Y train, and then our S train. Right? So we're going to be logit dot fit. Then we are fitting our S train against our Y train. So we're going to take some time and build the model. Very interesting. So that's train them, fitted them together, build relationship. Now we can check for the accuracy of this particular model that we have. It's going to be our accuracy, so print before we do any prediction. So score. Then we can have our S test, the one we have as our testing data set. And then our Y test. So let's check the C. Okay, not bad. Y that is 0 0.97, which is a very high prediction. 
right? So we have a very high accuracy. Now let's check for let's predict use it to predict something to see whether it's going to give us the right prediction. Right? Then we know how to interpret it. So the value we'll be using is going to be our s dot value, or let's use our s test dot values. Let's use the first value of zero, right? So this is the particular value we are trying to predict. So how do you predict it? So we do one for benign, and we do one for malignant. So let's do right. So let, we are using this particular value to see whether it gives us benign. We don't know it. We are going to predict. So it's going to be our logit that predict, right? The particular prediction we want to do. Then I want to use this particular value, but this is a whole sample, so we need to be able to reshape it to see that's a single prediction, right? It's a single sample. So how do we do that? It's going to use our numpy that array. Then we pass in our particular value that we have to so s test dot values, which is going to be zero. We are using zero for now. That's the one we're trying to predict. So we have that one, right? Then we need to reshape it to so dot reshape. Yeah, we're shaping it as one by this particular one. So that's going to convert the entire type into a particular sin single sample that we can predict on. Perfect. So that gives us as two, right? That means that this is a benign prediction, right? It is benign. So we will learn, we will try and see why it's giving us benign. So the next one is we need to do another one. So let's choose a value that is going to give us mm, let's choose something like random value, let's say 30, right? We have 30 or let's choose something like 15. 10, right, let's choose 10. Then you predict and see how it's going to be, whether it's going to give us benign, so that we'll be able to have an explanation for both of them. So this was 10. And this is still, so let's make it as 30. Mm, this is still, this is also giving us as benign, so we need to get malignant. Mm, so let's go with 15. Voila, so we have one for malignant. So this is going to be our for our malignant, right? So our value here is going to be 15. So, so we have named to build a model, we have named to predict, and we have to check the accuracy. Now we have to interpret this particular model why it gave us one as benign and one as uh, as malignant. So let's see how to do that. So there are several packages you can use. We have sharp, we have line, we have a So we try and see how to work with sharp, and you see the remaining one if you have time. So the sharp goes with several experiments, right? Just like Lime has experiments, Lime I have experiments. So the sharp experiments are five different types, right? We have or three different types. We have the tree explainer, which is the most common, which is very powerful for explaining tree-based models, right? Or such as uh, SGBoost, SKLN models that are tree-based, right? Very interesting. Because you can see everything as a tree in me. And just like you can see everything in NLP as a question and answer system. So we have deep explain, explainer, which is used for explaining deep learning models, right? So, such as in case you're working with TensorFlow Keras, you use this particular option. Then in case you're working with a gradient format of deep learning models, right? Such as PyTorch, you can also use this particular format, gradient explainer. So we have tree explainer, deep explainer, and we have gradient explainer. Then to explain any form of function, any model, including these ones above, you can just use the kernel explainer. It is very simple. So that's what we're trying to use in this particular option. So the basic idea is that you just go with the sharp dot kernel explainer, then the particular prediction function or the or the, or the, or the model, then your data set, then you are going to link it with going to be sharp. Then sharp needs JavaScript to help us to do our plotting very well. So we'll be initializing our plot with sharp dot in init js. So you see that has initialized it in a very simple way. This is very, very important. Otherwise, it's not good to me. Now, let's create our explainer. So I've already put them so that we have received time. So we have our explainer. So the explainer is going to be normal variable. Then sharp that cannot explain because we are working with a logistic regression model, right? Any function, any model, very basic models. Just go with kernel explainer. Then the particular model. Then the train data set. That is the basic idea about this. So you should not forget. So it's going to be our explainer. So it will take some time. So, so that in some cases, tell us that you use a uh, shape came in so you can also do that one to give a summary of that and then transform it now let's build the sharp values which is going to be based on the particular data set we have so we have our training one here as a explainer then we need to build the sharp values which is going to be within our test data set right so this is going to be for our test data set for particular one right so we are going to try to predict a single sample value 
not a whole big one, it's not a whole sap because if you are trying to predict the entire sap to get because sharp is has the ability to be able to explain every one of them. So it, and it takes a lot of time, right? It takes a lot of time. So you want to do for a single sample prediction. So there's a particular sample prediction we'll be trying to use. We have both the sharply values of this, right? With the explainer. And then these are the value, the features that we are trying to use to predict to give us a kind of prediction. So if you go to predict, you just go with this particular format. So sharp dot force plot, right? You have several plots, you have force plots, you have some new plots, you have dependency plots. But for the, the force plot, can be used for both of them and then the summary and the dependency plot is in case you build a sharply values for the entire data set right so we have explainer dot expected value yeah so we have expected value we have sharply value and you have this particular stuff so why do we have this so before i run this one or let me run it in the last screen so i run it like this so this expected value is going to be our expected value right so it's just predicted it in a very simple format for us so why did i put this everywhere so when you create an explainer it's going to give us these options so we have it's going to give us these options. So if you go with this stuff, let's before we before I explain, let's go here. So if I check this one, right? This is going to give us two values, right? So we have one and two. So we are bringing the zero here to just pick the first one. Right? That is why we are doing that. And then if you do the same thing for this one too, we are also bringing that zero here. It always gives us two. We are picking one, one of the one of the, the face format. So the same way with this. So this is the sharp value that we put. So it's going to give us two, right? So the first array and then the second array. So we are just going to just pick the zero. So that's why you are using that one zero zero. Right? You can use the other one to one one, right? Based on how much you want or what you want. So this is the particular single prediction that gives to us a very nice plot. So to explain it, it's just let me change this so let's see if it was a very nice plot. Perfect. So let's see how to explain it. So one of the things about sharply values or sharp is that it can be easy or it can be difficult to interpret it. Can it actually be interpreted in this stuff? Right. So I'll link a video below that gives a broader explanation for all of them. So this is how it's to explain it. So we always have a base value. In anytime you are explaining the sharply value, you have a base value. What it was supposed to be, right? It is a base value. Then it's going to give us the output value, that is the expected value, the one that is given to us. Then we want to see why did we get to this point so what are the things that contributed to move us from the base value the expected value that we had to give us this particular predicted value right so we are going to see red or blue so the red usually or any color but there are two main colors so the red is what are the different kind of features right so we have single epithelial cell we have mitosis we have all these particular chromatin and all these particular features right all these individual features are contributing to push our model, the prediction from the base value to our output value. Right, so then this, as I said, it is orderly, right? So it's giving us based on the size. So this size means that this amount is contributing. The bare nuclei is contributing more than the rest, right? So all these individual features, like the single epithelial cell, like the next one, mitosis, all of these individual ones are contributing all of these their weights to push us from the base value here to our output value right and then this is going to be the biggest because this light is bigger it's pushing it to give us our base value that's why it is red in a very nice format so let's try another one and see so that you see another difference before we move on to the other one so let's use this one for instead of making it zero here we are going to make this one small right this one is for remember that i said that we are two we have zero and then one right so we are trying to use that one to see how the other side of it and then this particular zero here is the first prediction the i look is the first sample our sample that you are trying to predict this particular sample so, so, that's the case. so let's try and see that one it's going to move to the other side right perfect so now you can see the two different aspects so we have the these are the features that are pushing us the base value to this particular point and then these are the features right how these features are going the other way around i right? see so that these are negative values here they are pushing at this a base value from when you're using these particular values. So, so these individual features are pulling us from the base value to get this output value. So that's a basic idea. So it is very important to understand this one. So we have the zeros here, right? Which is going to give us those that are pushing us to reach our output value from the base. All these things are contributing their own way to give us this particular stuff. And these ones are pulling us from that particular expected base value. 
Okay, that is a big idea. So now let's try another one for our single sample. So which was 15, and then the prediction gave us as benign, right? As malignant. So we realize that from here, the the main thing that was contributing was a bare nuclei, which is the highest one here. That was pushing us to this place. The same thing that's happening here. Right? That's the biggest one. So that is actually the one that is making us know that this particular prediction is malignant because it is terrible. But for these ones here, we are going to check for the 15 one, which was malignant. So we got another one, chapter one, of two, just in time. If it was just finished, you realize since we are finished, but if, it, if I check for the sharp values, right, of two, it's going to give us two different arrays, right? So this is the first array, the second array, so even if there are, right? So using this particular stuff, these values. Okay. So let's see our single prediction. So to do our single prediction, we just use the same stuff we had here. Which was we have already bought the sharply value so to predict you're going to use this option. Let me copy it and paste so that it comes faster, right? So in this format, let's use the first values, which is going to be zero. Then here. Right, so if I go with this particular option, and then I'll remember that this was 15. <laughs> this was 15. Right, right. Okay, so now this is how it's going to be. So this is two, and then you realize that that's it's showing us totally different format. So now it is no more this. You can see the particular features that are contributing to push our model right from the base value to this our total value. The reason why it gave us as malignant, not as benign, right? This is the particular features: the cloud thickness, the uniform cell size. So these are the things that are pulling us from this base value. To, from our output value, right? And you can try that one on the other way around. So let me copy that one and paste it there, please. If you see that this is giving us the other way around, see that you could see that some of the blue here, the matrix, so matrix is zero. And that is why this particular stuff it is well, it is benign, right? Very interesting. It is malignant rather. So these are the individual particular package, individual features that are contributing to make our prediction from the base to our output value. Okay, so let's see how to build the Sharply values for all the data sets that we have, right? It's going to take a lot of time. So it's going to be our Sharply values all and explain the sharp values, then our steps, right? It can take a very long time. So you just start reading, after reading through it, it takes a longer time. Then later on, you try and plot it. So I'll pause it. After that, you just check it. Okay, wow, that's finished. So it has been able to finish with all the processing. Now, in case you want to plot everything, so this is going to plot all the features, right? In a very nice way, just go with sharp dot force plot and explain on the splitted value. Then explain that is sharp values all right. It's going to do everything. So let's see if the plot is going to give us the kind of plot it's going to give us a very nice plot. Wow, so this is how the plot is. It's going to give us a very nice plot of every feature for the entire data set, and it's very interesting. So it gives you the option of going this way, right? You can select the particular stuff you want. So let's say you want to bring the and then again something to so bear nuclear sample order by similarity there are several stuff you can do and it's very very intuitive with a lot of features a lot of data details a lot of data so it shows you how all of these things are moving and progressing right so you can even change it let's say bear nuclear bear nuclear and you see how it's going right so these are the ones that are pushing it these are the ones that are pulling it so it's very interesting there's a lot of information and it is sometimes it takes more time and practice to enable you to be able to understand it very well, right? So that is one of the plots you can also do. So this is a very interesting plot you can also do. Okay, perfect. Now let's see another stuff, right? Let's see another plot you can also do. That is the summary plot. So the summary plot is going to give you, it's going to give you all the effects of all the features, right? It's very interesting. And it's, it's, we use a summary plot for when you have run and created your sample values for the entire data set, the one we are trying to work with. Let's test, right? testing data set so let's see how to do that so i'm going to plot it with sharp the summary plot then sharp values and all perfect so that here it's giving us the most important features right and the amount of impact they are giving to give us the prediction and it's giving us based on the order so the highest first to the least so based on our normal data set it's not like this but based on the effect it's producing on, on the entire prediction we have the bend apply right the First class, class one and class two, it is labeled here. Then you have the uniform cell, then followed by the clamp thickness, then uniform cell size, and all of these things. Very, very interesting. Very nice plot. So that is how 
it works. So it is a very interesting plot that gives you which of these creatures you should concentrate your attention on, right? Okay, so now let's see again another plot that is a dependency plot. The dependency plot shows the effect of a single feature has on a prediction. So today I'm just going to go with this particular option. So the same stuff we have. So sharp dot dependency plot. Then it takes two arguments. It takes three different arguments. So we have the first index, right, which is the index of the feature, which can be the index or the name, right? Then the matrix of the sharp values that you created, then the data itself matrix, right? That's the matrix. So that's how it's going to be. So don't go with this. And you're going to see the dependency plot for a particular. So the one here, the first column, right? The index, the first column, which is the uniform cell sheet. It's going to pick the most dominant one and compare the dependency for it. Again, you can also do the same thing, the alternative method. So instead of going with one here, you can specify the particular kind of feature you want to use as the index to check the dependency against. So let's use that one for the Benny Clan. And it's going to automatically pick something else, right? To compare against. Okay, so this is the kind of plot it's given to us. So we have the Benny Clan, the Benny Clan, then we have we have the sharp values for the Benny Clan. And then the uniform so very interesting okay. so this this is the basic idea about using sharp so there are a lot of things you can do with it okay so now let's see how to use li5 to explain this our particular model that we put so it's just going to import li5 right import li5 and then the most important thing that we need is that we need a feature name and then a class name to help us to see the particular kind of feature and the particular kind of class so, so this is going to be our feature names right that we have and then we also have we need to get our labels, our class name. So we realize that just by labels, those unique. Then this one gave us two different values, right? We have two and four, two for the nine, and then four for my element. So it's going to be our class name. Our class name is going to be the nine. So that's going to be our class name. So the next thing that we can actually use L5 to check for the model itself without passing any parameter. So let's see how to do that. It's going to be our L5. Dot show it by nice the Can you see line five dot show weight and top nine right perfect? So let's go to the top nine features. So we're going to see the top features. These are the top features. So we're going to list this one for us. But you realize that this is giving us as four, right? Prediction is four, and then these are the weights. So in case this is these are the expected weights supposed to give in case you want to give us malignant. But we don't know which of these features, which one is this. So in another way, if you want to clearly define it, then you bring the class names. Then the feature name. So let's see that one. So that's going to be this one. So by this, it's going to be clearly specific. So which of these is going to use to help us predict that this is malignant or benign? So if I put it as top 10, realize that this these are the features, right? So for it to become malignant, these are some of the weights that must contribute to give us this particular malignant. Right? For the entire disease, that is for the model itself. We have Ben Nikolai, which is the highest clamp thickness. Realize that in the previous one, we also had Ben Nikolai and the clamp thickness from the one that we had here. So let me show you here. Well, if you have Ben Klein as the highest, right? The uniform cell. So Eli 5 is trying to also tell us the same story that to give us any kind of feature, these are the ones Ben Klein, uniform cell shape, clamp thickness, just as the one that is giving here. So we have our uh, Ben Klein, right? And our clamp thickness and uniform cell for, to give us malignant. So let's try the same thing for benign so that is how it will do for malignant right now let's check for a particular individual sample this is for the entire model but in case you want to check for a, an individual model or an individual sample you can just go with this option like five to show prediction then logit right then the particular sample which we realize this is benign already then the features then the target names so this is benign we already predicted it was benign so it's telling us it's benign with a probability of 0 0.95 right very interesting so why is it giving us a benign it's telling us there's some bias with the intersect and then there's a uniform self shape of this particular form right and then there's also a single repeated so so these are the features that are contributing to make us make this particular prediction benign now let's see another one can also do so i'll copy this stuff for the malignant and let's see whether it's going to give us something different so the malignant that we were using was 15. So let's try to see. Voila. So this is a prediction probability score. And then it's telling us all the features that contributed to make this particular individual prediction a malignant. So we have clamp thickness keeping us to a plus two eight. Then we have uniform cell shape, cell shape, cell size. Then mm, uh, these ones. So these are the 
one that actually contributed to give us this malignant prediction. That's very interesting that you can also do. So there are several things you can also do with all this particular package. So thank you for watching this tutorial, this long tutorial. If you have any question or contribution, you can just please in the comment section below and then check the link below in case you need your help, help clean your data set. In case you need help in any way, you can also check the link below. Thank you and stay blessed.